Welcome to Season 4 of the Changing Earth Podcast with Sarah F. Hathaway. Blending survival fiction and fact to bring you entertaining education that will help you dream, survive, and thrive. And now, here's your host, Sarah F. Hathaway. Hello and welcome back to the Changing Earth Podcast. This is episode number 153, season 4, episode 29. So we're really starting to make way in the Battle for the South book. Um, it's going into a bunch of exciting stuff, you know, definitely uh, love the action. This book really just keeps moving the whole time. Working on my next book and it's coming right along. So that's always exciting for me. I love escaping uh, reality to imagination land where I get to create whatever kind of universe I want to. And so uh, that's always a lot of fun for me. And it's going to be a lot of fun for you once it's done. I want to welcome a brand new Patreon member. Thank you so much for your support. Panda is the name. And I really, really appreciate your support. Um, Definitely get on over there to Patreon, www.patreon.com dot com backslash changing earth to get signed up and panda is now enjoying a ton of goodies that i have available on my website um, including the las vegas years short stories and um, all the audio clips or i do a bunch of bonus audio clips that i have over there um, information that's not in the podcast it could be just fun stuff it could just be us uh you know just shooting the the breeze together you know me and my interviewee But um, some good information over there and some fun stuff as well. So, you know, he's enjoying all those goodies. And I really, really appreciate the contribution to the show so we can keep the show a-rolling. So, uh, as I shared on my podcast a few weeks ago, you know, we hit some um, financial issues. um, uh, Just a a little bit of shake-up here at our house. And uh, so, you know, the decision was, um, do we pull up? and move to a different place in the country. As you all know, I'm out in California. Um, You know, we get the horrible rap for a good reason. Um, You know, there's a lot of uh, BS that goes on here and uh, different things. We've seen a lot of positive swings in uh, not only the um, attitude of the people that are here, but also in some of the policies. So we'll, you know, we'll see how that all works out. So it really, you know, it came down to the decision of do we pull up stakes? Or do we dig in and try and save the property? And so what we're going to do is we're going to dig in and try and save the farm. And we're going to make that happen through, uh, you know, entrepreneurial goals and agricultural goals that we have for the place. So wish me luck on that venture. We are headed off into, uh, you know, a little bit of ag production and and, uh, trying to make money off of our farm. So I'll be sharing you, sharing that with you as we go along that adventure but right now, you know, we're just digging in and figure out how it's going to all work out and try and make some money. So that's the name of the game. And we want to do it in a self-sufficient way. You know, I really value my life uh, out in the country, out on the farm, and that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And so um, moving now to a different state where we have to reassimilate and, and all that stuff, just it doesn't make sense when we've got all the contacts here to make that happen. So you know, wish me luck on our adventure and that's where we're going. And I'll make sure that I share that with uh, you as, you know, as things progress right now, we're still at a really beginning stages and we're just building and uh, I got a whole bunch of baby chicks. And so my, my house looks like a nursery out there. I got the baby ducks out there. I got the baby chicks out there. So we're just going to be rolling through stock and uh, trying to make it work. So that's the name of the game. As far as our story goes last week, uh, Erica and First Sergeant Bennett, they had to work through some of the trust issues that they had going on. And uh, they did that pretty well. So this week, Bennett is loading them up, and then they're going back into the Badlands and uh, going back to base to go ahead and reunite with Daniel and the family. And so I have on the show, James Hart has come back on, and he's going to talk to us today about what you need when you are traveling across the country. So lots of us take road trips. Personally, I hate to fly. I'd rather drive any day of the week. I love doing road trips, but you know, there's certain things you wanna make sure that you are prepared for when you take that journey. So I have a cool little story to share with you after the interview, and we'll get to that later. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get into chapter 29 
of the battle for the South. Chapter 29 Vince and Erica spent a relaxing day with Dax, catching up. Eli agreed to Vince and Erica staying one more day to heal. Mercenary sources within the Federal forces said they were still busy in the North. Although they had access to the same weapons in use before the Great Quake, the quake itself had decimated the numbers of these war machines. The gasoline to fuel them was limited, and the factories to produce them were destroyed. Even with these limitations, the death count in the North was going to be astronomical. The people had fought many battles after the Great Quake, and they were not about to go quietly into the night. The next morning, First Sergeant Bennett was up early. They needed to get on the road to Reno. Good morning, boys and girls, he announced, walking down the row of cots Jensen, Smith, and the Moors were in. When there was no answer, he turned back around and bellowed, Let's go, people, giving each cot a swift kick. He turned around again. It's 0500, time to move. They began to stir, moaning about the early morning hour. I'll see you in the briefing room, Cupcake, he said, pointing at Erica as he left. Erica's body still ached, but she knew Bennett would not relent. She dressed in her camel and made sure her pack was ready to be loaded into the truck. Guess I'll see you at the chow line, Erica said, giving Vince a kiss before heading out. Erica hustled over to the office Bennett had taken her to the day before. He was there, on some kind of a phone. Erica thought it looked like a backpack and a walkie-talkie had a baby together. Yes, sir, we'll drive straight through. Yes, sir, thank you, sir, he said, pushing one button among many on a control screen. Morning, Cupcake, he said cheerfully. He knew how much she loathed the early morning hours. Erica was too groggy to come up with a snappy retort. Good morning, sir, was all she could muster up. What's up? You wanted to be informed? Well, this is briefing hour, he told her. Okay, she said hesitantly, wondering what she had gotten herself into. After chow, we were headed back to Reno. But I told you, she started to argue. Erica, you're being informed, but this is not open for debate. Just listen, he calmly stated. After chow, we were headed back to Reno. The feds know you guys are here, and it endangers this whole force. The mercenaries are working on sweeping out the federal forces' pockets in the Badlands, and they are headed to Las Vegas. I was told to assemble a team that knows the facility. I have three weeks to get this team ready to infiltrate the refugee camp and remove key targets that could be used as leverage against us before the mercenary army attacks it. Are you in? Bennett had laid out the plans and awaited a response. You know I am, Erica replied confidently. Good. Grab some chow and get over to the truck. Dex knows where it's at, he told her. Send Jensen in. She was confused about Jensen, but sure enough, when she opened the door, she saw him standing there waiting for Bennett. Ma'am, he acknowledged her. First Sergeant Bennett's ready for you, sir, she told him. Erica crossed the expanse to the chow tent with the hop in her step. She was going to see Daniel and Star. Her purpose was clear, and it felt good. After getting her food, she sat down with Vince and Dexter. They were just finishing up and waited for her to eat while she told them about the upcoming training and task in front of them. Vince and Dexter agreed that they were in as well and packed the truck up to leave. It was a hot ride through Arizona. The sun beat down relentlessly. Erica tried to sleep, sweating in the back of the truck, but it was so hot. She felt like she was in a puddle. She thought about Star and Daniel. The anticipation of seeing them far outweighed the pain of getting there. Bennett and Jensen traded on and off driving, and the vehicle began to cool as night set in. They made it to Reno in the wee hours of the morning. Pulling up to the mercenary barracks, Vince's dad, Earl, was waiting for them. There were hugs and tears shed. Erica hugged him tightly, knowing he had taken care of her son and gotten him here safely. Kay is eager to see you and we have places for you to sleep, Earl urged them. Hold on a second, Erica said, heading over to Bennett. What's the plan, sir? You have two days, then we start, Bennett told her. Good night, sir, Erica said, heading back to join her family. She was in awe as they walked down row after row of tents. The camp was quiet in the morning hours, but Erica could smell breakfast getting ready in food tents. It would be day soon, and all these people needed to eat. Erica
Erica broke into a sprint upon seeing Kay standing outside the tent with Star. They hugged tightly as Vince joined them. They had been apart too long, and the pain of wondering if they would ever see each other again was intense. Oh my goodness, Erica, what happened to you? Kay wondered, noticing her black eye and stitches on her cheek. You know, same old story, Kay. Erica didn't want to talk about her latest brush with disaster. Entering the tent, there were sleeping mats on the sides and a table in the middle. Erica saw a teenage girl sleeping on one of the mats with an older male soldier nearby. She looked at Kay and Star with questioning eyes. It's Megan. Her family didn't make it. And Johnny, Kay replied. You've probably heard about his dad. Erica nodded in recognition. No more needed to be said. Erica focused on her baby boy, sleeping peacefully in the corner. Tears filled her eyes as she approached him. She put down her gear nearby and lay down beside him. His scent filled her being and she wrapped her arms around his body. He had grown, but he was still her little boy. She fell asleep faster than she ever had before. Vince stayed up for a while watching the morning sunrise. He told his parents about their journey south, but had to cut the story short. Kay was headed off to help in the nursery. There were now former landowners among the refugees that had not been given the infertilization procedure. Earl had to leave for his shift at the infirmary. They promised they would be back by dinner so they could talk more. Vince was wiped out, but the happiest he had been in a long time. He watched Erica holding Daniel. He turned and saw Dexter and Star sleeping peacefully. All his family was back under one roof. He sighed, relaxing as he curled up next to Erica. Daniel woke up in a few hours. Mom, he whispered, waking her. Hi, baby, Erica said soaking in the sight of his beautiful eyes. I missed you so much, Daniel sobbed, hugging her tightly. I didn't know if I would ever see you again. Don't you ever, ever do that again. We won't, buddy, I promise, she urged him. Vince awoke to the commotion and hugged them both tightly as they fell asleep again. Erica reunites with her young son and vows never to leave him behind again. Oh, it was a pretty traumatic experience for him. However, he was critical in um, some of the roles that he played while he was there. So, you know, mixed bag of nuts there. But to be absent from your child for that long uh, in that type of world and to reunite with them has just got to be incredible because I know every time we go on vacation, I have to leave my kids behind. It's just, it's just heart jerking. Like you want to go and you're like, yay, I get a break from my kids. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I miss them so much. How could I ever leave them behind? I'm never doing that again. I couldn't imagine this world that they're in not not knowing if your child's alive, not knowing if you're ever going to see them again. Very, very scary plot line there. In the meantime, it was a long, hot trip across the country. And here to discuss what we should have prepared when we travel across the country is James Hart. James Hart is the author of Urban and Wilderness Emergency P Preparedness. He's got a great website with lots of discounts and all his materials over at heartsurvival.com. H-A-R-T, um, heartsurvival.com. And he is a veteran of two tours of duty in Vietnam. He began his survival training at the age of seven when he was stranded in the Mojave Desert for seven hours without food or water during a family move in 1954. So I think he understands what we need to have in this travel pack. Since then, he's been through the scouting program where he attained Life Scout, served as Scout Master, Assistant Scout Master, Venture Advisor, and earned the Baden Powell Award. An avid outdoorsman, he has winter camped in Utah and northern Quebec, Canada, snowshoed in upstate New York, Utah, and Quebec, and camped in the Mojave Desert of California, the Untaw Mountains of Utah, and the Piney Woods of East Texas. Among numerous other locations, James has traveled and been through 42 of the 50 states of the U.S., three provinces of Canada, sailed the Pacific Ocean, and crossed the equator, and 35 countries from jungles of South America to the Himalayas of Nepal. Having earned an Associate of Photography degree from the Houston Community College, he has beautifully captured many of his travels with his camera. Now retired from a career with the Trinity River Authority of Texas, James resides in Dallas, Texas, where he lectures on wilderness survival training. 
He is the author of SWET, Survival and Wilderness Experience Training, Urban and Wilderness Emergency Planning, 35 other booklets on wilderness training, monthly articles for Survival Life magazine, and a column and articles for the Garland Messenger newspaper. James also does workshops and speaking engagements. Once again, if you want to get a hold of James, you can go to heartsurvival, H-A-R-T, survival.com. So let's go ahead and welcome James to the show. Hi, and welcome back to the Changing Earth podcast. Today, I am back with my good buddy, James Hart. James, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Weather's good. Ready to get out August, or excuse me, July. The end of July. I'll be back up in the mountains of Utah and probably out on the desert, too. So I'm getting back out now, and uh, good weather's here. I love it. I love it. Yes, got to love the summertime. It's going to be hot out there in the desert, though. Uh, well, you put up with what you got to put up with. We can't change Mother Nature. We have to live with it, and that's what uh, I do best. Yep, yep. Yeah, I think I'd rather go for the hot desert summer than freezing cold below zero winter, so. <laughs> well, I live in uh, in Dallas, and we have... Uh, Real good winters compared to the north up there, but uh, and I've lived in the uh, in the cold 17 years up in Canada. Yeah, I've had my share of the cold too. I'd rather be in the warm than <laughs> the cold, but uh, it's refreshing to go up there in the winter time uh, and come be able to get out of it and right. come back down here. But uh, it's good to go up there and play in it every now and then. Nice. Well, I know that you got your new website up and running, so why don't you go ahead and let people know where they can find you now. I'm trying, in the process of updating all your links so they go to the correct place. and So why don't you well, just go ahead and share that? Okay, I still have my other website up, and I'm going to keep it up. Uh, that's uh, www. Excuse me. That's too many Ws. That's too many, many Ws. Uh, three Ws and uh, pre- prepared with James Hart dot org right uh dot blogspot dot dot yeah blogspot dot 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 com yeah yeah. and the uh new one is uh a lot simpler and uh a lot better i think uh it's uh uh, heartsurvival dot com yep heartsurvival dot com nice and easy not nothing challenging about trying to remember that one so no, it isn't. And we also have a store on there, and we have some real good suppliers. Uh, we have a uh, uh, fire starter that is excellent. And uh, I tried it out the other day, and I'm going to do a video of it and put it on there. Uh, I used a uh, feral serenium rod. Okay. And one strike and, and poof, Mark. I had fire. Nice. And it was good fire. And with it, I think you could even uh, start uh, uh, some damp material. Uh, I'm going to try that too, but I haven't done it yet. But it is excellent. And uh, a, a can of it about the size of a, a chew, you know, Chewing yeah, back the can yep. uh, is uh, like fifteen dollars, and that should last you if you use it every time you go out, and if you go out a lot, it'll last you for a couple of years. And the thing is, you don't have to buy a new tin every time you empty it. You can buy refills. Okay. And the refills are cheaper than the tin, so. So just have one of those for the go bag, have some refills stacked up. That's right. Yeah. And uh, also, excuse me, you can buy the uh, ferro serenium rod, and it's a nice, good, thick one. And that should last you a lifetime and probably your children a right. lifetime. So, nice. And that's $15 or so. You know, you'll never wear it out. All right, it's worth it. And we also have a supplier that uh, you can get uh, emergency uh, 
blankets, emergency uh, sleeping bag, and things like that to fill up your sur survival kit at a uh, very reasonable cost. And just about anything you need, we can get. If you don't see it on the store, uh, there's a place on the website that you can email me or you can ask me questions or anything else like, like that. And I will respond to it immediately. Within 24 hours, you'll have a reply. So if you don't see it on the website, because currently I'm having a problem with the store, uh, by putting everything up that we have, just email me. We can get it for you. Excellent. I even have a, a cargo tie-down uh, that's really unique. It's two bungee cords with two uh, attachments to it. So you don't have to have all of those uh, ropes and everything else. Mm -hmm. And they are really great and unique, and they're uh, 16, 17, 18 dollars. Nice. And they're, they come in three different lengths, three different colors. Uh, the colors indicate the length on them. Uh, they're fantastic. They're selling like hotcakes, really. You can use them on your ATDs, your truck, and everything else. And that's on the new website, heartsurvival.com. Uh, come over there. We, we're, we've got posts on there for information and everything else, just like the other website. Uh, I transferred a lot of information from the other website to this website. Which uh, takes forever. Gonna, <laughs> uh, well, it was rather easy to do it uh, on this new website. But uh, I, I just love this new website. It's so yeah. easy to work with and everything else. Yeah, me too. Um, definitely bringing all my stuff into that centralized hub is just making my life so much easier. So, yeah, and it just looks so much cleaner and beautiful. So. Excellent. HeartSurvival.com. Guys got to get over there and check it out. It really does look, look really sharp and some great deals and some great gear over there. So let's get into the podcast. Today in my book, this is when First Sergeant Bennett is loading up the crew and they are driving from Albuquerque, New Mexico back to Reno, Nevada, basically. You know, it's in the new landscape, but that's basically the road trip they're making. Uh, it's a road trip I know pretty good because <laughs> I drive that about once a year to get out there to see you guys. So um, I wanted to go through just, you know, your your um, survival kind of history begins with this car breakdown in the middle of the desert. And that's that's what got you fueling. So um, when I thought about <laughs> I <did> it, <laughs> right, when I thought about the cross country survival trip, James Hart was my guy I'm going to. So traveling across the country just creates a myriad of uh, potential issues. And uh, there's a reason why generally we rent a vehicle and don't use our own to make this trip. So let's talk about like some of the things we should consider for our vehicle's welfare before we even make the trip. Okay, the, what you should do really is uh, before you even start the car up and load it up, uh, there's a few checks that you should do, okay? Check all of your liquids, your oil, your transmission fluid, your windshield washer fluid, your radiator fluids. Uh, I've even gone so far as to take it to a mechanic and have him check it over also. Uh, check the radiator fluid to make sure that the antifreeze and water is a proper mixture. Mm -hmm. Make sure the radiator is flushed so it's getting the proper circulation. Make sure that your uh, air conditioning radiator is also working properly. Uh, a lot of people don't check that. And you get going across the, the desert, and your air conditioner goes out, you've only got four windows to roll down. <laughs> That's Before right. Before that, in the older cars, they had wind wings that they could flip out, and right. that air would come in, and it would cool quite a bit. Uh, it's like the old attic fans that they used to have. 
uh, you turn one of them suckers on, and boy, they would suck air all the way through the house. One of those, with the windows open, would take care of those houses. But they don't have them anymore. And you have to have air conditioning, especially down here in, in the Dallas area. And uh, it's, uh, you know, you got to check all of those things. Yeah, the windshield wiper and, fluid cannot be underestimated because you get, you know, you get going at nighttime, so many bugs, just garbage piles all uh, over your windshield. And you're like, oh, windshield yeah. wiper fluid, right? Yeah, every time you stop for gas, uh, you've got to clean your windows. Yep. And uh, it just, uh, it'll mess them up so bad you can't even see. Yeah. And, uh and then, it's just uh, terrible. Check, check all your fluids. Check your your uh, have your tires checked and your wheel bearing grease by the mechanic. Okay, mm -hmm. I was on a trip from Houston to Montreal, and I got up around Pennsylvania, and I started smelling smoke. And it got worse, and it got worse, and it got worse. And all of a sudden, it just got so bad I had to stop. And sure enough, my rear wheel was so hot, it was ready to catch fire. Sure enough, one of the wheel bearings went out. Yep. Uh, this was in an older car. But that doesn't mean that these new cars won't do it, too. Okay? Right. And it only takes a minute to pop that cap off and check the grease in there. Make sure the grease is good and not worn out. Uh, check your fl fluid level in your rear, you know, in your uh, differential. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's up to par. Make sure it's... Uh, you know, it has grease, uh, oil in it. That is never checked. Yeah, we blew a transmission okay. in uh, um, Iowa coming across the country from Michigan to California. And there's nothing worse, you know. Yeah. There's nothing worse. Now what do you do, you know? So we ended up That's trading right. the car in and buying a new car. We had the financial ways and means to do that. But if you don't, you're just SOL out there. You're SOL. What are you going to do? You either got to buy a trap, buy a new transmission, or you know, rent a vehicle. Yep. Or you're stranded. And uh, luckily enough, I was able to get to a, a what is it, Kmart Auto Center, and get it fixed that day. Uh, you know, those people up there were just so wonderful and nice. And they even discounted the price for us when I, I guess the guy I seen it was, you know, we was moving to uh, Montreal at the time. And, right. uh, you know, we explained our situation to him and everything else. He discounted it for us. And, he, you know, it was just, he was just so nice and everything else, you know. If I had his name and and everything else, you know, I'd repay him back right. for the discount niceness that he had. It was just wonderful. But you've got to you've got to check your vehicle. You've got to do everything you could, and I did. Except I didn't check that yep. wheel bearing grease. Yep. You know, but you have to really be vigilant and know your vehicle and know its limitations and everything else. And I do that now right? because of all this. Stuff. You have to learn and you have to remember. And, you know, it's there's just so much that you've got to do to make sure you're going to get where you're going on these long distance trips. And sometimes it's not enough. You know, you got to check yeah. your belts. Yes. You got to check that your hoses. All your hoses, all your belts, check them. Uh, you know, your water pump, there's nothing you can do to check it. 
you know, check your mileage and see whether. Yeah, maybe you, you could know, record hey, like the last time, yeah, that you changed it out. That's right. And trying to figure out, well, it's so many miles on the vehicle. Is it about time for this to go out on me? If it is, go ahead and change it. You know, yeah. if you got the money and everything else, uh, go ahead and change it. Sa rather be safe than sorry. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. And you, you know, there's some, there's some really nice, great places that you drive by on a cross country road trip. And there's some really shady, scary places you don't want to break down, you know? So. That's, that's right. And belts don't cost that much. Okay. Right. Go ahead and buy a belt, period. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. if you lose a timing belt or, uh, even the know, power steering belt. belt. Yeah. Power steering belt, yeah. timing belt, whatever. Okay. Uh, go ahead and buy one. Yeah. Stick it in the toolbox, stick it in the trunk. You know, at least you'll have it and have the tools to change it out. What about that? What about, um, so we have belts, you know, what about extra things we should carry with us as far as like, um, sometimes if we were in an older vehicle, we'd probably definitely be having extra oil with us. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Or oh, extra fluids, extra, windshield you know, fluid. a gal gallon, a uh, gallon of oil, that'll get you somewhere where you can put that extra cord or two in there. Right. Okay. Uh, antifreeze. Okay. Mm hmm it comes in gallons. Yep. Put it in there. Okay. Uh, you know, you're going to carry water to drink. Go ahead and buy it by the gallon. Have a couple of gallons in there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, yeah, that antifreeze mix is actually really important. Um, we live yes, down, yes. you know, we're down in the foothills where it doesn't get very cold. And my radiator was just going funky. So we kept putting water in there, putting water in there, and we went up to Tahoe, and the engine block froze because we didn't have any uh, antifreeze in it. And we were never up there, but we went up there on the one trip, you know, and boom, blew all boom. the uh, plugs out of the engine and stuff because we froze the whole block. So. Well, at least the plugs come out and block didn't crack. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that was a I lesson had... learned for sure. Yeah. I had a car that they what they rushed it out on, and thank God I was in Houston. <laughs> There's no way they could freeze out, but uh, <laughs> right. It wasn't hard to get them out once they rusted out, but uh, yeah, things like that. You know, yep. check your freeze plugs. You know, like me, what happened to me? They rusted out. Right. You know, check them. It's another thing you should check, you know, make sure that they're, they're not rusted out, not leaking. Because if they're leaking, you get out in the desert somewhere, you ain't got no water in your, in your engine. It's so going to burn up. What are those manuals called that you could carry the physical manual to for the vehicle? The, uh, well, there's Chilton manuals the and then there's the other, uh, other manuals that come out that are specific to your vehicle that uh, tells you how to tear it down and everything. Right. And uh, have wiring diagrams in it in case your wiring starts uh, burning yeah. somewhere. You can, you know, work that. But uh, have tools, you know, electrical mm -hmm. tools, your wire strippers. Uh, Make sure all your lug nuts, all that, nut, the tire change stuff is all there. Like yeah. that, and extra wire. You know, I carry extra wire in my truck, of course. Uh, I retired as a uh, senior millwright, which is uh, nothing more than a uh, exaggerated maintenance man. I knew hydraulics and pneumatics and mechanics and electrical and electronics and all of that stuff. So, you know, it's it's nothing for me to figure out and troubleshoot what's wrong and fix it. But you got to have the tools to do it. But you got to have the tools to do it. So carry you some electrical tools, some spare hoses, spare uh, belts and stuff like that. And have your wrenches and your sockets 
uh, I carry two sets of sockets, two sets of wrenches, a good set of screwdrivers. Right. Like I said, a good set. Yeah. Not one where it's going to pop out of the handle. Perfect, and, yeah. yeah. Ergonomically made so your hand doesn't hurt when you use them. Right. Uh, and things like that, as well as, uh, I got pipe wrenches. And some of those nuts and bolts, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're going to tear your wrenches up yeah. and break. And if they do, and you only have one set, then what? you're screwed. Mm-hmm. Okay. It tears up a wrench. Don't put that other wrench on there. You're going to need it later. <laughs> right. Yeah. Figure so out. I stick a pipe a wrench. Plan. I stick a pipe wrench on it. Okay. Okay. And I back on them with a pipe wrench mm-hmm. until I get to a place where I can buy a new bolt and nut. Right. That's why I carry pipe wrench. Makes sense. And, you know, when you're out in the middle of the desert or middle of nowhere, you got to do it. But when you get back to the city or back where you can uh, put a good nut back on there, then do it and replace that wrench. So what about okay. the you people? Still have, you still have one. You still have one good wrench that way. Fair enough. For a bolt, in case something else happens. Okay, and I have uh, two or three sets of different sizes of. Okay. Uh, Pliers. Yeah, Brock does. I don't have, like, any tools in my car. I'm horrible. It's like my worst prepper arena, for sure. I'm like, ah. Uh... <laughs> well, because of my trade, yeah. I had uh, uh, $26,000 worth of uh, tools <laughs> right? that I used, and uh, they were in a, in a toolbox in the back of my truck. I forgot to lock it one night, and oh no! You know it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They used to. Uh, Brock, Brock used to do plumbing, and there was always people coming by, taking, taking and taking out of people's trucks and stuff, and selling yep. them down at the free market. And... Yep. And that's yeah. what happened. But yep. yeah, you have to have you have to have the tools and the knowledge. Okay. Right. So get familiar with your vehicle. Yep. Before you take those long trips. Okay. If you rent a car, you've got knowledge with your vehicle. All right. To know all of this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you're going to rent a vehicle, I don't suggest you go down and d- buy all these belts and everything else. Right. Because they're responsible. Yep. Okay. But have their number handy. Mm-hmm. So you can call them and say, hey, your vehicle ain't no good. Get me another one. I'm right. stranded out here. One of the motorhomes we rented, the door latch on it blew out, you know. So we had to figure out a way to jimmy rig that sucker closed so it wasn't flying open as we're going down the road. And yeah, that that was exciting. So it's things like yep. that you just got to be willing to adapt to real quick. Yep. And when you get on the highway... You should always have your own personal survival kit right. for your car. Uh, even when you're driving around town, going to work, coming back, you should have a sur- car survival kit with you. And uh, there are several things that you should have in there. And in case of a shit hit the fan scenario, uh, along with your own personal kit, right? You like can grab it, carry. grab it as well. Yeah. Uh, but I always maintain a full tank of gas, and when it gets down to a quarter of tank, I fill it up. Right. I never let it get below a quarter tank. Uh, if it gets down to a half tank of gas and I see a good price on gas, I'll fill it up. Mm-hmm. I'll top it off. 
Uh, I've even topped it off at a three quarter tank <laughs> if the price is right and the uh, weekend's coming because they always jack it up for the weekend. Yeah. Uh, in that car survival kit, uh, I have a first aid kit and a manual. I have uh, a class ABC fire extinguisher. Uh -huh, in okay. case, in case I uh, have an electrical fire or a gas fire, you know, oil, gas or oil fire, in case something in the engine catches fire, then I've got something to put it out with. Mm -hmm. uh, if I catch it fast enough, uh, I have radio with batteries, weather radio, uh, emergency radio. You know, I can get the emergency channels on. I have some non-perishable food. Uh, actually, it's an emergency food block. Okay, so uh, like uh, dehydrated food or? Well, yeah, dehydrated food. You can put some of that in there. I have okay. pouches uh, uh, for three meals, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, three different meals, and it serves 10 people. Okay. It's, reseal oh. it's resealable, so I can take out what I need for myself, you know, if I'm the only one in the car. Mm -hmm. uh, I can take out what I need, and that can give me 10 days' food. Fair enough. For yeah. me. Yeah, I usually you know, just carry state. protein bars, but... Yeah, yeah well, I've, I've got a protein bar in there mm -hmm. uh, that I can munch on. Uh, uh, and, you know, it... Everything's resealable, all three, all three of those packages, and protein bar, too. Uh, I have, uh, I, I recommend a case of bottled water, but uh, I've always got five or six bottles of, of water in there. And yeah, I don't mind drinking them, if, even if they're hot. Right, yeah. You got to do what you got to do with that one. It's not as good as cold water, but <laughs> right. you know, it's water, and that's what counts. <laughs> okay. Uh, a bag of sand, shovel, and tools in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that if you get on a slick, slick surface and, and you have trouble getting started out, we'll just spread some of that sand out. But, uh, you know, in the summertime, I don't. Carry that. Carry you don't really yeah, eat. we get kind of spoiled um, here and where we're at in California because we don't have weather. Like, you know, just driving down to Texas this last time, we got caught in that huge thunderstorm, tornado warnings. All yeah. well, we don't have any of that that happens out here. I'm like, we're the most spoiled people because it, oh, it's going to be a big storm. It's like sprinkle, you know, yeah. it's done. That's that's pretty much it. You know, so we don't we don't have very much weather. Um, it does dump rain sometimes in like flash flood type scenarios, but that's about as bad as it gets. You know. Yeah, we had uh, we had softball sized hail. Yeah. In Carrollton, which is only uh, 10, 15 miles away. Right. From where I uh, yeah, and Oklahoma just got slammed with it too last month. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, this was this was just a couple weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I've been I've know. been really watching. There's a lot of really really interesting things going on with our planet right now that not many people are talking about, and uh, it's kind of like I know why they're not talking about it because they don't want everybody worried about it. But there's some yeah. freaky stuff going on right now. Cracks and just mass die-offs and the ocean doing yeah. things it normally doesn't do and it's interesting if you get on there and start learning about what's going on because it's it's spooky. Yeah, I watched a, a series on Netflix mm -hmm. about disasters mm -hmm. around the world, and uh, you know I teach emergency preparedness, so that's one reason why I watched it, and right. it was just amazing and fantastic to watch that, and. Uh, you know, some of them didn't make the news, but a, but a lot of it did. It uh, talked about uh, Fukuyami. Fukushima. Yeah. Fukushima. Yeah. Yeah. 
and the repercussions and, uh, and the uh, tsunami over in the uh, Indian Ocean and yep. uh, all of that stuff. Yeah. But it, it also talked about a lot of stuff that we we didn't get the news on. Yes. And uh, mudslides and everything else that that I I te- normally teach about. Right. Uh, but it yeah, was, these huge wide. cracks are opening up like everywhere right now in the oh, earth. Yeah. yeah, it talked about them and the earthquakes and everything else. It was just amazing. Yeah. But uh, you know, uh, you know, getting back to the car survival yeah, yeah. kit and everything, uh, along with the uh, other other things we spoke about, the radio and batteries, perishable food, bottled water. Bottled uh, water. I, I always carry in my truck, uh, I've got a, a stadium seat that uh, I carry two wool blankets in. Yep. Okay. Uh, so carry blankets or sleeping bag. And, you know, down here in the Dallas area, we don't get the cold weather that right. uh, most people. I mean, we do get cold weather in the wintertime. It gets down, you know, 20 degrees and. 18 right, but it's degrees. Not like frozen. It's it's not uh, uh, the cold that, with the snow and everything else. Like for days and days and days and days and days on end, right. we might get a week of it, and then it'll warm up to the 50s, and and then we'll get another couple of days or three days, four days down around 40 and stuff like that. It doesn't go on and on and on. Yeah, but well, I, I know. Carry, um... When we're traveling, like, in the mountains and stuff, we usually bring a coffee can that has candles and stuff like that in it. That way yeah. we have, like, an emergency heat source if we needed it yeah. with, like, some cat litter. And that way, you know, you can put it out. It's got someplace stable to sit where it's not going to start anything on fire, you know. Yeah. Well, I've got, uh, I make, uh, I take cat food cans. We've got a cat. And I take those cat food cans. And fill them with cardboard, and I melt wax into it. Okay. And make cookie burners. Okay. Mm-hmm. The only thing with them is, is the can gets hot. So right. I have to put. Uh, I have to put uh, something under them to keep the can from burning. Whatever it's melt whatever underneath them. Okay? Right. That's the thing. And they provide uh, hours and hours of light and heat. That's a great know. idea. And you can but easily just do like a coffee can with the cat litter and put that little can inside of that, and then you're all set. Yeah, you can do that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, instead of sand, you can use cat litter. Yep. But wrap, wrap the bag in plastic so that the... Whatever, whether you have rain or snow, doesn't seep into it and clump it. Right. Okay. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> or get the non-clumpers. Then, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then uh, I also have a sundry kit, which is a uh, paper and a pencil on the map of the air, uh, road map, you know, or, and uh, uh, tissues. You know, for you know, blowing your clothes, wiping your eyes, stuff like that. And also some pre-moistened towelettes and uh, plastic bags, uh, essential medications, uh, you know, a leaf, Tylenol, aspirin, stuff like that. Uh, maybe some anti-diarrhea. God knows what you oh. end up eating across the country. That's <laughs> right. You don't know what's in them truck stops. Yeah, right. <laughs> And then I have uh, flashlights and batteries, uh, reflectors, flares, uh, waterproof matches and candles. Uh, I delete the candles and use the uh, butter buddy burners. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, jumper tables, and uh, and then I even have a short rubber hose for siphoning gas. Now okay. in these new models, they have a spring in there. And you can't get that hose down in there, right? So you, uh, you know, check and see if uh, see if you've got that spring in there. If you do, forget it. 
Yep. You can't siphon. Carry a, a, a gas can with with gas in it, but don't put it in your uh, the you cab know, in the in the cab right. and cab. You know where people are. Put right. it in your trunk. Put it in your trunk or the back of the truck. You'll get there uh, and be like, "Woo, that was awesome!" <laughs> You'll have a dangerous high because that gasoline will uh, kill brain cells. Yeah, explode them. Yep. Yeah, it will be one of the one of the few with uh, <laughs> road trips you ever you make know. again. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll be a few brain cells short of full. <laughs> right. Uh, there's a couple things that I'm missing on here that uh, you should have. Uh, you know, there, I can't think of them right now, but, uh, that's yeah, pretty well you know, covered. I mean, we always try to make sure we got a lot of snacks, emergency stuff that comes up, you know, um, band-aids, first aid kits, stuff like that. Oh, and then of yeah. course, you know, we travel, you know, um, I'm always curious about where my concealed carry is going to be okay and what state and what state it's not, you know, so yeah. I tend That's to try right. to figure that out ahead I'm, of time. I'm the same way and, uh, I conceal carry. I have, I have my concealed carry. In fact, I just renewed it and, uh, there are some states that you can't do it in right. and there's some states you can. So you got to be wary of that and know which states are with, uh, has the reciprocal agreement. And, uh, also, uh, you, uh, have to, uh, know the laws of that state. There's yeah. some states you can't turn, do a right hand turn on a red light. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, Michigan has like a Michigan UE where you have to go into the middle and then turn around. Like you can't make any left-hand turns at the stoplight. You have to turn right and then go down and turn around and go back that way. And I just, you know, I hadn't been in Michigan for years. Come from Cali, I just turned left. My mom's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, whoops. Yeah, so they yeah. have some different laws around. And you also have to remember that... uh there's areas that your cell phone is not going to work in. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if you break down and you have a cell phone, it may not work. You may not be able to call for help. Right. Uh, you I may have not be able to rely on the GPS. You need to have that physical map. That's right. And I have uh, OnStar in my truck. Mm-hmm. And... I have uh, telephone service with it, and even out in the deserts where there's no cell towers and so, uh, it still works. Yeah, it must be going to a satellite. It's it's going through a satellite. Yeah. So, you know, you may want to uh, uh, purchase a satellite phone. Those things are expensive. I know they are. And you can uh, rent them though. I've heard you can rent them too. You you can rent them and it's eight dollars a minute. If you use it? And to use it, yes. Right. You buy the minutes and they do roll over year after year. And they're worth it. Yeah. Okay. My life is worth eight dollars a minute. Fair enough. Yep. And if I have to stay on the phone for 10 minutes, that's $80. Right. My life is worth it. $80. Yep. That's true. It's absolutely true. I'm paying something like $36 for the uh, OnStar and, and Sirius. Sirius. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. And if I ever have to use that telephone for emergency, go ahead. It's there. Well, yeah. It's there. And that's what it's for. And, uh, you know, I'm sure your life and everybody's life out there watching this is going to say. Yeah, my wife's yeah. worth 80 bucks, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's right. That's right. 
And that phone can sit there for a year. And I may not have to use it. Yeah. But if my cell phone's not working and I have to use it, you it's worth it. it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Another thing, and these, according to some people, and according to some people's budget, yes, it is expensive. It's called a, a personal uh, safety beacon. Okay. You have one of them. Like one of the life lock type deals? That's right. Yep. You've got it. Okay. Okay. And uh, a lot of people carry these when they go out in the wilderness mm -hmm. and go camping, go hiking and stuff like that. And uh, if they get in an accident, they set this off. How much easier is that for search and rescue? I mean, come on now. That's hands down. That's awesome. It has saved many a life, I'll tell you. Yep. It has saved many a life. Mm-hmm. Uh, it goes to a satellite and, and it's mon those that satellite is monitored and it gives a pretty exact location. Uh, hikers in Colorado and Montana have been rescued using that EPIRB. It's the same thing mm -hmm. that is on an aircraft. Right. Okay. And you know how fast that they get to those downed aircrafts. Right. You know, Personal aircraft. Yeah, that's a great idea, actually. I don't want so, a chip in my arm, but I might carry one in my pocket. <laughs> that's right. right. You can yeah. carry it in your backpack or whatever. They're not. Yeah. They don't weigh that much. So, yeah. you know, that's that's what I. I, I you know, as far as the the uh, satellite radio, uh, satellite radio, and the EPIRB, except for those two. That's what I carry. You know, I got the Ansar in my truck. So right. Yeah. I wish we would have had one of those emergency radios um, when we were yeah. coming across the country. Because, like I say, we don't have that much weather out here, so there's not much cause to have one here. But, man, when we were coming yeah. across the country, I wish we would have had one hands down. We were just driving into storms. You can see them off on the horizon. You know you're going that way. You know, it would be That's great right. to be able to be able to queue up and go. All right, the weather, and I'm sure there's a, an emergency channel on the radio, but a lot of times you, you're you in zones where your radio doesn't even work. You know, your the radio in your car is just fuzz or Spanish channels, you know. Yeah, So. yeah. yeah. Well, serious, I have a weather channel. Right. So, and that's yeah, satellite. We don't, that's, we don't have that, so, right. You know, yeah. you know, I drive a Chevrolet, and Sirius comes with it, and, of course, you pay for the Sirius, and right. that's what I'm – I had about. I wish they were on all vehicles. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was like, I'm not upgrading it. That's fine. I'll, it I'll is. It is. Uh, after my trial, six month trial period or one month, whatever, uh, I just kept it because uh, it's so. You know, it serves a, a very good purpose, and right. uh, you know, it's, it's great. It's great. So you, sh you know, those are the things that you should have in your survival kit. You know. Always maintain a half tank of gas. Never go with, below a quarter of a tank. Carry a first aid kit and manual. Manual on the car. Okay. Uh, fire extinguisher, radio and batteries, non perishable food, bottled water, uh, sand bag, shovel, tool kit, blankets or sleeping bag. Uh, a sundry kit containing paper and pencils, map, mm -hmm. tissues, pre-moistened towels, uh, plastic bags, essential medications, flashlight and batteries, uh, reflectors or flares, waterproof matches or candles or something to you know, keep you warm, give you light in case you break down and it's cold, uh, waterproof matches and candles, jumper cables, short rubber hose for siphoning. Uh, what about then, if you're um, going to be taking some uh, pets with you? What do you think? Was there anything, you know, beyond just water that we should have for them, you know? Anything that you could think of that we might need to consider if we're taking pets along with us? When you're taking pets with you, uh, 
if you're carrying them in a, a carrier, uh, you know, pet food, right? With dry, drier or wet, yeah, uh, canned food. Uh, uh, My old boy, yeah. you know, so he gets a little stressed when we're traveling, and I found yeah. that if I take um, just cooked rice, just take some cooked rice with us. He'll eat that yeah. all day long while we're traveling, but he won't eat his, like, regular dog food. He's like, hmm, what if I give him the cooked rice? That's good, and it's good for his tummy, so, you know, that's yeah. something that I... I that and some hog treats, and uh, stop often so that you can let, let them get some exercise and outdoor, you know. Right. Pets don't like to be cooped up. No. They like, they, they like, you know, they're like kids. Yeah. Okay. Think of them as a kid. Uh, they don't like to be cooped up. They like to be out and active and, and uh, you know, do things. Uh, I've found in those southwest states, they pick up a lot of uh, stickers and stuff in their feet, too. A lot of burrs and whatnot. So yeah. Constantly checking their yeah. feet to make sure that they're not. Have a, first aid, have a first aid kit for pets. Okay? Yeah, fair enough. Squeezers, uh, you know, an anesthetic that you can put on their, their yeah, feet after you get the stickers out of them and everything else. A good brush or comb, mm -hmm. uh, comb them with, uh, and things, things like that, you know. Make sure that, uh, you've got an insect repellent. Right. You know, ticks and stuff like that. Yep. They get ticks just like we do. And. Oh, they get them worse. Probably worse. Yep. And, uh, you know, care for your pets just like you do your children. Yep. Uh, you took the responsibility when you got them. Yep. And, and nowadays they, they have um, really cool, like, collapsible bowls and stuff that are really easy to use, pack, and move, you know, when you're on the go. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I've got th uh, three dogs and a cat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got to take care of them. Mm -hmm. You have to. They're your, they're your responsibility. Yeah. If you don't take care of your pets, you don't take care of your kids. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't take care of them, then as far as I'm concerned, you shouldn't have them. Absolutely. You ought to be shot. Yep. Period. I agree. Uh, you know, so. Yeah. So there are care. like some special, if you want to, you know, if you're going to take the responsibility of bringing them along, make sure you actually plan for right. them too. Right. That's right. Have a first aid kit for your pets. Mm -hmm. Have, uh, you know, have tweezers and scissors and stuff like that. So you can cut those, those, uh, burrs and, and stickers out of their hair and, mm -hmm. and, uh, stuff like that. Uh, have some, uh, you know, like I say, the first aid kit. If they get, uh, uh stuck by a porcupine, you know, uh, get them to a vet, Yep. get them stickers taken out if you yeah, can't the, take um, them yourself. A lot of the parking lots too, you know, they're hot, the The ground is not really grassy or nice for them, so I don't yeah. have any of them myself, but like those little booties for their paws might not That's be right. a bad idea, because it, you know, my Sawyer, he'll be down on that pavement, and then he's... You know, he wants back into the car because his feet hurt, you know. So. Yeah. Think think about the pets, uh, you know. Yeah. Like I say, treat, treat them like you treat yourself, yeah. you know. That that pavement's hot, like you say. Yeah. Uh, you don't want your feet on, on it. That's right. Same with the gravel, you know. Yep. That gravel hurts their feet just as much as it hurts yours. Yep. Uh, sure, they have a, a, a pretty hard pad on but the outside, still. but... Uh, you know, they can still get stuck. They still get stickers in it. They still get thorns in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, get them on the nice grass or get yeah. them off that. If you pavement. can find it. It's a yeah. challenge sometimes when you're traveling. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it is, especially in the desert. Yeah. Uh, you know, even that sand is hot. Yes. Uh, you know, I've gone to the beach before and the sand was so hot that, uh, you know, you had to run across it and get in that water. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. It was, it was, uh, Super hot. So maybe like a dog blanket is a good idea because then at least you can give them a safe spot where it's cooler yeah. for them to Carry a, to. 
carry yeah. a tarp. You can put a tarp out there and let that dog stand on that tarp. Yeah. Tarp. You know. Uh, you know, you're carrying a you're carrying a blanket or sleeping bag. You know, have one for the dog. Yep. Yeah, that's we have one for them. That's right. And if you can get a dog blanket, you know, a dog, uh, what you call it, cover. Like a bed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. You know? yep. you yeah, it take makes it care. much more comfy for them to travel, you know, when they have something squishy to lay on. That's right. That's right. Take, take care of your kids. Take care of your family. And your dogs and animals are part of your family, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Uh, I have never uh, traveled with an animal that I didn't take care of that animal. Well, that animal actually rides in the, in, the, in my truck. Right. I've got a, I've got a half cab, a cab and a half. I've got seats in the back. That dog rides, rides back there with me. Yeah. Okay. When he travels, he rides there. Okay, when I take the dogs to the groomer, they ride in the front seat. I got two of them I take to the groomer. They ride in the front seat. Okay? They're my family. Yep. They're my babies. Okay? Treat them like that. Take care of them. If you're going to travel cross country, if you're going to travel anywhere, take care of them. Yep, be prepared to make more frequent stops, that's for sure. That's but right. But they're worth it, you know. Otherwise, you got to figure out, you know, who's going to take care of them while we're gone, how much is that going to cost us, you know, what's going on. It's a lot of the reason why I don't fly, because I'd rather yeah. just bring them with me, you know, and my old guy, he's real attached to me, so if I leave for two weeks, he just does nothing but mope around. You know, the whole That's time. right. So, That's right. Last last couple months, look, we've been a couple dogs die yep. by flying. So, yeah. you know. Uh, Debbie's going to Ohio the end of this month, and I'm going to Utah for two weeks the end of next month. Mm-hmm. And we're going separate so that one can stay home and take care of the animals. Right. And uh, if we go together, then, then you uh, gotta bring them with. Oh, <laughs> uh, we get some. We get one of our daughters to stay oh, and animal sit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we make sure we have somebody responsible yep. to take care of them. Yeah, I've had Not that just... experience, too, where one of my neighbors was like, oh, I totally forgot to go up and let your dogs out and feed them. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. how can you find uh, uh, yeah. the... They were inside the whole time, no food, no, no bathroom yeah. break. I wanted to strangle them. Yeah. Like, that's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's how we work it, and I think everybody else, uh, I don't know how they work it, but I, I, I hope that they're taking care of their animals properly. And I think the people I know are responsible people. They're good people. The people on survival life, uh, the people on, that come to my websites and stuff like that, I think for the most part are good people. And, the ones that have animals uh, know and respect and are like myself. Right. Well, they're the, your little guardian. You know, you got to take care of them. Got to take good care of that's, them. That's right. They're like a little baby. You know, they don't know yeah. and can't take care of themselves like we do. Right. So you have to take care of them. They're our responsibility. Yep. And, you know, animals... Uh, like dogs and cats, uh, they love and respect us. Yeah, no matter what. Right. Uncon- yeah. That's the word I was looking for. Yep. Unconditionally, no matter what. Yeah. You know, they can do something wrong, and we can pop them on the butt. And they come back. Two minutes, back. Two minutes <laughs> later, back just like that. You know. Yep. Give me some petting. Give me some petting. We love uh-huh. you. All right. So, take care. Cool. Well, awesome. I think that was a great piece on what you carry with you, how to maintain your vehicle, yourself, and your animals when you're doing long road trips. And uh, one of my favorite things to do. So, 
I swear one day I'm just going to have an RV and just tour around everywhere. And, you know, I, I told yeah. Brock, I'm like, we could even get a trailer and like do a garden behind our RV and then we could just pull our garden around with us too. He's like, yeah, probably not, but <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we're looking at tra uh, tra pull behind trailers right now. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think by, by next year, they're decently gonna... priced. I mean, even for a brand new one, they're, oh. they're pretty decently priced. They're pretty nice inside. And, you know, I've, I, I'm really partial there. I've seen some very nice ones for about 3,500 right now, 18 yeah. foot. So, yeah. you know, as soon as we get a few things wrapped up, everything else, uh, I've got a legal suit going right now from a wreck that uh, I was in mm -hmm. last, last year. Uh, uh, get that settled up and get Debbie all settled up. We're going to get a travel trailer. And... Sweet, you can come park it out here. Come well, check we're out the home. Plan going up there and up in Washington and Oregon nice. and uh, you know Utah, Idaho. Yeah, as long as we'll I'm take... still here by that point, come on out. No matter where I am, yeah, come on out. If you're out in Tennessee, we'll go out there too. All right. Uh, you know me, I, I got I got feet that won't stop. So right, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm the same way though. I'm just like, oh, I gotta keep yeah. moving, gotta keep going. It's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. I want to see what's on the other side of that mountain. All right. <laughs> All right, James. So why don't we wrap it up? Go ahead and tell people where they can find you. Same old shtick, and we'll just say toodaloo to them. All right. Well, you can find me on uh, Facebook. At Survival Life and at Sweat James Hart and at www.heartsurvival.com. Drop me a line, or call me at 469 810 9062. I take all calls and I'll answer all messages. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, James. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you, and it's always a pleasure to be on your podcast, and I'll do every one that I can. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, James, so much for coming on the show. Lots of great information there. Don't worry about writing it all down because I do the weekly page on my website, which has all the information from the podcast there for you. You can screenshot that or whatever, and then you'll have a nice list for what you need to carry when you are doing a cross-country road trip. So the story I wanted to share with you at the end of the show, I was talking with one of my fellow martial artists at a recent testing that we did, and he is a self-professed city boy. And he was talking about traveling up through Nevada on some of these roads that are just a single lane highway that just goes on forever. And he started, you know, nobody's around, no gas stations. And he started thinking about, do I have a spare tire? What would I do if I got stranded? He started asking some of these survival questions, some of the exact same questions that I'm addressing in this podcast. So I was explaining to him what he should have in an EDC kit that he carries with him every day. And he was like, you know, that's wonderful. I could carry all that stuff. However, I'd have no idea what to do with it. And yes, I was amused by his statement, but I was also deeply concerned because you need to understand what to do with your gear. Many of us uh, are out there just spending, spending, spending on prepper and survivalist equipment, and we have no idea what to do with it. So that's really why I like to emphasize training above all else, because training can go on without gear, but gear cannot be used without training. It simply means if you're not out there practicing, if you don't understand how to use a fire starting stick, if you don't understand how to strip down paracord and make use out of the insides of it, it does you no good to carry it. And that was really a great point that was highlighted while I was talking with this gentleman. I was, so I was like, you know, you got to get educated. You got to start reading my stuff and, um, you know, learning how to survive and learning how to use that. You know, and he just didn't see the need because he's always in the city. He's always surrounded by concrete. The urban areas are some of the most fragile areas 
And um, unfortunately, that's where a lot of uneducated people, uneducated into survivalism, I'm saying, very, very educated man, very talented, very smart. Um, but when it comes to survival and what you could eat around your house, um, how to use the, the tools that you would carry in an EDC kit, he has no clue. And unfortunately, a lot of other people in these urban centers are also on the same footing. So if something were to happen, it would be very, very scary for these individuals because they have no idea what to do beyond their normal routine for survival. That could lead to a lot of chaos very quickly. Also, FEMA camps are an option and the government provides them and the government's going to take care of you. And, but once you're under the government thumb, it, you know, you, there's no real coming out of there until they say that you are released from said area. So to me, I'd rather not enter that area to begin with. However, you know, if that's your plan, then you better know a lot of self-defense stuff, especially if you're a woman, because some of those areas are the most violent, scariest areas to be in as far as um, camps that they set up after natural disasters. People can lose their civility very, very quickly, especially when it seems like there's no law enforcement and, uh, you know, there's no end to the, to the situation that you're in. So um, if that's your plan, please at least train some self-defense so that you can be ready to defend yourself if you need to. Bottom line, go out there and figure out what you're going to need to survive. You know, take a pack out. Um, if you're in the urban center, start thinking about, you know, what are your neighbors going to do? What, what, <laughs> where are you going to be in the midst of all that chaos? So um, definitely a lot of food for thought in that conversation. And I wanted to share it with you because, you know, it's really important that we understand that there are so many of these people surrounding us that have no idea. And, you know, best case scenario, they would look to you in a peaceful way come time because you know what you're doing. So they'd look to you for leadership because you've already been educating yourself in these areas. Worst case scenario is they'd want to just come in and take what you got. And uh, that's, that's very, very valid for that to happen. So we have to be aware on all those counts. And we definitely have to keep thinking about those aspects and keep our intelligence avenues open. Know what's going on around you. Know who your neighbors are. Um, know what their feelings are. Know what their education level is as far as survival and that kind of circumstance. So just wanted to share, share that with you today. Um, once again, I want to remind you that every contribution that you can make to the podcast will keep this podcast going long into the future. You can go ahead and become a contributor at www.patreon.com backslash changing earth. Thank you guys so much for listening. I love hearing all your feedback every week. It's, it's what keeps my wheels spinning and lets me know that I am making an impact in the world. And all the work that I put into this podcast is absolutely worth every drop of it because I'm out, I'm changing lives and uh, trying to spread God's light throughout the world. Thank you so much for listening again. And until next time, remember, dream, survive, thrive. Thank you for joining Sarah for this episode of the Changing Earth Podcast. Don't forget to pick up your copy of Day After Disaster, Without Land, The Walls of Freedom, and Battle for the South at www.authorsarahfhathaway.com. If you love Sarah's books and this podcast, please head over to Amazon or iTunes and let everyone know by leaving a review.